the Professor, presented by Fountain Pen Geeks. My name is Aziza Asgarali, and with us today is Professor Tarquin Danglebury. Oh, hello. There you are. Yes, hello. How are you? I am very well. How are you? I am very well, too. Aren't yeah. you going to ask me why I'm wearing a t-shirt? Well, I'm going to have to ask because I'm very curious. Why? Yes, well, you know, the answer is that I was, I was on the subway recently, and I saw a couple of kids. They were hanging out, and they all wore t-shirts, and I thought, Tarquin, old cock, that looks quite good. I think you need a t-shirt, too. So, I got a t-shirt, and I think I look spiffy. Don't you think so? I think I look spiffy. You look very, very spiffy. I'm surprised you did not consider wearing a yes. t-shirt sooner. I tried to find one for a millimeter, but there were no t-shirts in his size. Oh, well, maybe you need to make him one. Or maybe somebody needs to make him one yes. and send it to you. Yes, that would be quite nice. It would be much appreciated because he wants to look spiffy too, you see? Yes, okay, that's fair. So, you know, anybody listening, maybe you could consider that because he wants to be spiffy. Yes, yes, yes please. Okay. Well, thank you for enlightening us on your endeavor to be spiffy. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. All right. So spiffy. let's get cracking, shall we? Yes, let's do that. Yes, let's get cracking. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. We have some good questions for you. First of all, we have from Pipeness from the website. Pipeness says, is there a pen ink smell you prefer? I find that many of my inks have different olfactory characteristics and I'm therefore attracted to some inks more than others based on their smell alone. What is your favorite smelling ink? Thank you. Yes, well, I have to admit that I'm not actually going about smelling a whole lot of inks. Um, I'm not in the habit of smelling a whole lot of inks, but there are some that do have distinct smells. Um, there is the, uh, the Sailor Gentle Inks. Have you ever used Sailor Gentle Inks? Yes, I'm a big fan of them. You're a big fan of them, yes. Then you know they must smell a bit, right? Yes, yes, they do have a very interesting yes. smell. Very interesting smell, yes. Um, so those smell, do I really like that? I'm not sure. Uh, Noodler's Base State Blue has a fairly interesting smell. Fairly interesting smell. It's a very typical smell. Um, not sure whether I'm a huge fan of that. Let me think. You know what, I actually like fairly, I, I, like, I like Conway Stewart's smell. I've known him for a long time, and I, 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 I like his smell. I would say. Does yes. Does Conway Stewart know this? Well, he doesn't mind. Oh, oh, okay. That's interesting to know. Um, huh. Yes. Very interesting. Yes. Personally, I like the sailors' inks as well. So, I guess you don't really like. Yes, them. you sniff inks a lot. Uh, moving on. Yeah, moving on. So thank you, ah, yeah. <laughs> thank you for oh, that. Oh, you're, you're very welcome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Very welcome. From yeah. YouTube, from Rui Antunes. This is interesting. Please yeah. give some thought about making your own pen, especially with a seriously flexible nib. I also liked your points about ink bottle design. Well, of course you 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 like my points because they are brilliant. Um, the 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 pen. Yes, I, I agree that it would be very interesting. Very interesting to have a Professor Tarquin Dangle pen. You know, a pen you could buy, use. I mean, where do you go? These days, where do you go for a really nice pen? Right? So I think it would be a very good idea to have a pen line, the Tarquin Dangle professorial line, and it's, but I need to find a pen maker first. So I will keep you posted on that. How about that? We're just going to see how things are going to progress, and that's all there's to it. But who's going to make the nib for you? Someone who is very good at making nibs. Oh, okay. But I don't know who Okay, yet. fair enough, fair enough. You know, I might have someone in mind, but maybe that'll come up later. Okay, so we'll, yeah. We'll see. Okay, the, the next question is very interesting because, uh, you know, it's kind of related to what we first discussed. Um, this is a question from Ink Smelling Girl 69 on YouTube. Ah, oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, is it normal to smell inks? I do it a lot, and I wonder whether there might be something wrong with me. Well, uh, you're thinking a big sip of tea there. Um, you know, it's, I don't think there's anything entirely wrong with you, although I don't smell a lot of things myself. I don't know whether ink smelling is some new theme. I mean, first you had these 
meth, and then you had bath salt, and maybe now it's smelling equal to you are doing. I just don't know what the kids are doing these days. They go around doing all kinds of stuff, smelling all kinds of things, and I just don't know. Now, is it normal? Well, let's put it this way. You're not really harming anyone, are you? So I suppose it would be entirely fine to smell as much things as you like. Well, she might be. She might be scaring people. Well, yes, but I mean, when you think about it, who doesn't scare people these days? There's also a lot of weird people out there. I wouldn't worry about it too much. That, oh, okay. Well, I think that might bring Ink Smelling Girl 69 some comfort. Well, that's good. I, I hope you don't mind. I'm just checking out whether there are any ball point uses on the perimeter. Oh. No, we're safe. We're safe. Go on. We're safe. Well, you know, it's good that you're so uh, vigilant. So awesome? Yes. Oh, uh, yeah, um, or that. That works too, I guess. Um, carrying on, carrying yes. on. Um, yes, Speaking of ballpoint users, uh, from our email, Cheryl asks, what does Stephen Brown have against ballpoint pens? Oh, he has a lot against them. He has a lot against them, I know that. I happen to be in his office. He always allows me to use this because I'm not technologically feasible, you know. So he always allows me to use this where he has the video set up and the thing. Now the question, what does he have against ballpoints? Well, it's very simple. There are about, quite a bunch of samurai swords there. Uh, I think if I look in this drawer, I know that what he has is a hammer. He has a hammer against ballpoints. Um, probably when you look, I have to keep Lord Windermere a bit secure here, otherwise he falls off. Uh, if you look, if you look a bit further, uh, you will see a flick knife which he has against ballpoints. So actually, I would say he's fairly well protected. You really need not worry about Stephen Brown and ballpoints. No worry. Oh. It'll be fine. Oh. Oh. Okay. So he is well protected against ballpoint pens. Yes, okay. it's well protected. Well okay. protected, I would say. Oh, and then you survey the territory with your yes. binoculars. Yes, I survey the territory with my pocket microscope. Oh, oh. No, sorry, telescope. <laughs> it's not my telescope. Microscope is much smaller. It's like the other way around. No, this is actually a telescope, which is very useful. You can just hang it around from your neck, and then you can just check your perimeter for ballpoint users, which I always find a particularly nice thing to do on a Sunday afternoon. Check, check the world for ballpoint users and then laugh at them. That's so, what I do on a Sunday afternoon. Do you have issue against ballpoint pens? Well, not really, except they are stupid and fairly weird to use. I mean, why would one use ballpoint in his right state of mind? I mean, you, not the ballpoint, because ballpoints don't have a mind, as we all know. Why would you use it if you have the perfectly feasible alternative of powder pens? That's what I would say. That's a fair point. Although, wouldn't yeah. a ballpoint pen fall under the category of penology? Um, yes, well, I have often, I have often, often, I have often told the people at my faculty that it should say fountain penology. That's the oh. only pen. Oh. Strictly speaking, you know, I don't consider ballpoints pens. Just like I, de I deny the existence of France. It doesn't oh. exist. Ballpoints oh. are not really pens. It's not, it's not, it's a different thing. So the thing is that um, I tried to, to put, uh, put the name fountain penology on, you know, on, on the building. But it didn't fit. It was the penology was already quite long, so you could not fit the whole thing. It was fairly large letters. I wanted large letters. Oh. And it oh. did not. It also found that would be too much. Oh, so you like the letters really? You you like them big? Well, yes. I mean, people have to see how fantastic we are, you know. So we have to see it of from course. a pen. Oh, oh, what's it? You know, you have a little guy walking around, little little boy with his father. Oh, daddy, 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 what is that? And then he can say, "Well, that my lad." That is a penology faculty. It's, it's amazing. You will never see anything as interesting as that. You forget about physics or, or linguistics or psychology. Ugh! It's much better to do something interesting like penology. You can see that from a father. Let's have a light. Well, I mean, not on fire. I mean, they are lit. You know, they are lit from below. So you can actually see them during the night, too, so that everyone knows that, that is a beacon of pen knowledge, so to speak. Huh. And how does the professor feel about dip pens? Tough question, tough question. It is a nib, it doesn't have its own ink supply, does that really make it a pen? Is it just a writing utensil? These are deep waters, my dear girl. I think we have to cover that some other time. Oh, okay, okay, well, fair enough. Oh, we'll Thank see. you. Okay, well we have another question. Yes. From, from Jimmy from Utah. Jimmy? Yes. Ah, long time I haven't seen Jimmy. 
but I do know him. Yeah. Oh, well, good because maybe you can help Jimmy out. He asks, "Can you Quite use good. any converter on any pen?" Excellent question. Excellent question. Um, the answer is sometimes, because there are some pens that have converters that are quite universal. But many brands these days want to make money, a lot of money. And so they have converters that are proprietary to that pen. Take, for example, Lamy. You cannot just put a Parker converter on a Lamy pen because Lamy wants to make money by selling you their Lamy converters. You see, that's the thing. Now, interestingly enough, some converters are sort of swappable. Parker and Waterman. Officially not, but, you know, same factory, and these days, quite a lot of them are swappable. Some pens have really weird converters. So, for example, I happen to have two converters here. These are by Cross. Nice, nice factory. I love them. Cross makes nice pens. But, as you can see, this probably won't focus, but they have a very weird nipple there going on. Mm. which is quite strange, and it only fits a cross pen. So the answer is, some of them do, some of them don't. And it really depends on the brand you are selecting, and that will decide whether or not you can or cannot use that specific convert on that specific pen. Interesting. Any pen. Universal pen. Sort of. So you should just really get one of every pen and one of every converter. That would be the simplest solution, and I would recommend if you are buying a pen, you want to use a converter, then order just a converter along with a pen. It's not going to break your back financially, and it leaves that way you know that it's going to fit. Excellent, excellent. Well, that was a good question. Thank you. For yes, that, it was a good question. That exquisite response. And it didn't actually deal with smelling inks, which was a huge relief. <laughs> yes, a relief. You don't want to have to dabble in that affair, right? Well, not all the time. No. Right. Okay, we have another question. Yes. Um, this is a very interesting one because, I, I, well, I think it's very interesting. Um, it's from Mary via the desk. Um, oh, Mary. Yes, I have good memories of Mary. Oh, that's that's very good. I'm I'm pleased to hear that. Yes, yeah, uh, so am I. <laughs> oh, good old Mary. <laughs> a while ago, though. Anyway, yes, yeah, go. Mary asks, who is this new Hamish McNagg fellow? Have you met him, and do you approve of him? Yes, well, let me say this about that. When the disassembly line videos were launched by SBRE Brand, an ex-student of mine, then I was quite sure that he was going to ask me, Professor Tarquin Nagelbury, that's, that's my name, um, that uh, I would provide the voiceovers. I was pretty sure he would do that. Now, I was quite shocked when suddenly I see these videos appearing and Hamish McNagg is just introduced as being the character who's going to do the voiceovers. I wasn't asked. I wasn't consulted. I was just passed by as if I was some, I don't know, weird character without any usable knowledge or something. Whereas I am completely normal. You shouldn't believe everything doctors tell you. And, and, and I was just passed by. And I was, um, well, I was a little bit sad, I'll be entirely honest. But anyway, so you, you, your question was, Hamish McNagg, who is he? Well, I was born in West Nipshire, it's just, you know, it's just below the, the Scottish border. And then to the east of West Nipshire, to the east of West Nipshire, is East Nipshire, that's how it is. West Nipshire, East Nipshire, yes. That makes sense. There is no north and south in Nipshire. They don't exist. Now, because of the lie of the villages, East Nipshire is just above the Scottish border. So it is in Scotland, whereas I was born in England, you know. And interestingly enough, I happen to know that Hamish McNagg was born in that part of East Nipshire, that is the sort of highest part. So he's really from Scotland, but as it is just, just above the, 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 the border of the country, his accent can be a little off. 
I'm just saying this so people get a bit of an idea of who he actually is, you know. Um, so some people have commented and said, well, this is really a Scottish accent. Is it weird? Why does he sound so weird? Well, the reason is it's not really. I mean, it's kind of like skittish. It's like Scottish, British. It's it's a weird, weird mixture of, of accents. But still, you know, I, he is a, he was a blacksmith. Oh, but he didn't make any 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 horses horse shoes. He was more specialized in gold. He was a gold blacksmith, but he used traditional blacksmithing methods to make gold stuff. So he was quite good at making nibs. He was quite good at that. Quite oh. good. Okay, I have to admit, he was quite good at that. Oh. Uh, and he, he actually he was from a fairly that part of East Nipshire where he was born is a fairly industrial zone. So he was fairly good with factories, and you know that that sound at the beginning of those videos, that very weird sound. Yeah. But that actually was recorded in East Nipshire in the nib factory that Hamish sort of founded. Sort of. It's a long story. I won't go into the details here. Uh, that was Harry the Nose was involved. It was all very nasty business. But in the end, that's where the sound was recorded. And then there is Hamish. Who will give his 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 voice over and, and, and views, fairly amateuristic views, fairly amateuristic. I mean, I would probably give a much more scholarly approach to that, but I was not chosen. Hamish was chosen, so good luck with that. This is what you get. Uh, and Hamish will <laughs> he will just give. I mean, I always find it fairly interesting. You know, take it apart. It's that that that, that strange lilt he has. I'm not entirely sure whether I like that, but it's it's something he does. And you know, I have to. I mean. He's not doing a bad job. Well, that's very noble of you to be so yes. kind to him. I would do a better job, but what he's doing is not bad. Well, that's uh, that's still very nice of you. I mean, you're being very generous with your praise. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Well, thank thank you for the background on Hamish. Yes, I, I hope that was a little clear. It was a somewhat associative story, but it's been a while since I've seen him, so I just all these images popped into my no, my youth. Good to know. Nature. I, I didn't. I didn't know all this information about Hamish. Oh, good. Oh, good. good. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll hear some more about him because I think he's very popular amongst certain people. Yes, he, I, I know he is. I, I, he, he did. He did send me an email, and he said that he was getting a lot of fan mail from women. I don't know why. Oh. But apparently, he is. He is popular with some. Yeah, I. Oh, I'm not really sure why either. Um, no, I don't understand. But then yeah. again, I'm not a woman. Yes, no, you are not a woman. Probably best that you are not. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you. We we actually have one more question. Oh, do we? Yes, it's from Karen uh, through email. Um, yes. Karen asks, is it safe to suck on a nib? I've heard it helps bring the ink up the feed and was wondering what the professor's view on that theory is. Ah, Karen. Yes, I remember Karen. Um... The, uh, yes, I, 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 my god, this is a very interesting question, isn't it? I'm quite surprised that people come up with such interesting questions at the spur of the moment, just, just pops into the mind. Yes. Uh, no, I, I, yes, I, I mean, suck your nib wherever you like. That's what I would say. I mean, it's a great way, I mean, it's, it's, I think it would be infinitely better than just smelling eels. And how else can you get it started? Look, look at the, all the alternatives. They're terrible. You can try to shake a pen like this. Oh my God, Lord Windermere, tell Are you all right, Lord Vella? Oh, oh no! He's a little shook up. <laughs> He's a little shook up. He fell off my shoulder. Are you? Yes, he looks okay. It's because you got so distracted by talking about your explanation about the theory of nib sucking. Yes, I know. And he, his eyes are a bit weird. He probably has a concussion. I'll take him to the doctor lately. I'm just going to put him on his back, and that should work. Uh, for now, this is going to be all right. Uh, that, that relaxes a lobster, you see. Um, and, um, 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 yeah, so um, it's, it's, you, can, you can flick your pen like this. I'm going to insert This is an empty pen, so I can insert it. You can flick your pen like this to get the ink flowing. But the problem is that's going to be quite weird, isn't it? Because, I mean, at some point, you're just going to flick ink all over yourself. No one likes it when ink sprays out prematurely. And you want to do that on the paper and just write, you know. So that's not going to help. <coughs> I have something in my phone, too, so I need a bit of cheap. <sighs> that's much better. Okay, so that's that, uh, that's not a good idea. Then you have the alternative, which is banging the paper, no, the pen, the pen into the paper. That's not good either. Because I was once doing that, and I was just sitting, you know, there was a curtain, it was closed. There was light behind me. People saw me sitting like this. 
trying to get my ink flowing, and I have to tell you, something got flowing, but it was not exactly the desired result, and people actually called the cops on me. Oh, the police no. just dropped by and said, what are you doing behind that window, man? And I said, I was just shaking my pen. And they said, oh my god, are you entirely right in the head? And they said, of course, I'm a professor of penology, look me up, here's my card. And they said, oh, I'm sorry, then it's all right, we're just going to get out of here. So they just, they just did. Now, so that's, shaking is not, not good. And hitting it in the, the paper is not good because you know you can just you can just bang your nib in there. And the harder you bang it, the more more problems you have with probably bending it. So suck it. Just pop that pen into your mouth and suck it. Suck the ink out. I think that's an excellent idea. Thank you. So Karen, that's... don't worry. Just suck all the pens you like. I'm that's sure Karen I'm will will really appreciate that answer. And out of great concern for Lord Windermere, we are going to wrap this up so that you can take him to the vet. I think I'm alright. I do feel a bit weird, a bit light in the head, but I think, I, I think I'm going to make it, so don't worry too much. I just need some crab salad. Oh, okay. I, we're, well, we're still a little worried about you, so... Yeah. yeah and, and I think this whole episode is going to have to be analyzed by a certain psychologist that we all know. So, yes, just pause on the tapes. Yeah. So we are gonna we're gonna do that. Thank you so much, Professor and Lord Windermere, for participating. You're very welcome. Bye. And and Bye. thank you to the chat room and to everyone who's submitted questions. Please keep them coming. We appreciate yes. it. Yes, please. We really do appreciate it. Yes. Absolutely. So take care, everyone. We'll see you next time. Ta ta. Bye bye.